welcome back to round two of the 401 Games Discovery Kit Tournament Seal Deck. Round two, we've got, uh, oh, you got them swapped. Oh, sure. So we got, on the left, it's actually Kyle uh, with the Archon Lyricist Don Finate. And on the right, we got Kirk Champion L. Muskax. That, that combination Kirk has, probably one of my favorite house combinations. Brobnar, Logos, Deese. Brobnar and Deese, both very heavy control houses. And Logos is the glue uh, that binds them both together. Meanwhile, on Kyle's side, we have um, <clears throat> we have strong control elements. They're his strong control elements come in his Shadows and uh, Sanctum. Some... Uh, some pretty standout cards are Witch of the Eye and that Dew Fairy that Kyle just played. And Ghostly Hand, Oubliette, Skeleton Key, Speed speed Sigil times two. That's interesting. That's interesting. You want to bring that up actually very quickly? That's going to be interesting, uh, I think, to see if, if he draws any of those, plays those out. Uh, a lot of players really have a love-hate relationship with this card. Uh, it really depends on the strength of your creatures and also really depends on if your your opponent's playing any sort of heavy hitter. Like, fight-heavy houses like Untamed and Brobnar, I think, really benefit from something like Speed Sigil. Uh, and having two of them, well, we'll see how that works out for Kyle. But anyway, Kirk was the first player in this game. Here's that first of the two Speed Sigils that we mentioned. He's going to follow that up with an Oubliette that's going to purge... Uh, one of Kirk's creatures. What was that? It was like a something Martian something. I don't know. Uh, our, the our Osmo uh, Martianologist. This guy. What happened here on this side? Oh, I guess that's just the screen. Not behaving. Weird. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> How that happened? You gotta highlight this one. Uh, Weird. Anyway. Oh, there we go. We're back to the full picture now. <clears throat> Kyle continuing his uh, untamed rally here with a cooperative hunting. After playing a Niffleape, which of the eyes is going to return? Uh, maybe Lost in the Woods might not be a bad idea here. To kind of stay ahead. Well, I think the Lost in the Woods went early. That was like the first card he Right, played. but Kyle's using Witch of the Eye right now. To get oh, back sure. cooperative hunting, he's going to use it straight up again to deal another two damage to Dr. Escatera. Now, I think it's going to be Kirk's priority to get rid of that Witch of the Eye, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him call Logos here again to try to trade uh, Dr. Escatera for Witch of the Eye. Certainly don't want him to get another activation out of it. So, speed sig first speed signals in play. Or sigil, sorry. So... I do see a Positron bolt in Kirk's hand, so Logos is going to be the house he calls. Going to do three and two. Yep, killing off the Witch of the Eye, dealing uh, two damage to the Niffleape, gaining an Amber in the process, putting him in at five Amber. Kyle also at five Amber. Yeah, kind of sort of forced into that play. Fortunately, he only had the one Logos card in his hand that he wished to play. But uh, Siege, Speed Sigil actually doing lots of work for Kyle here. He's going to play Ancient okay. Bear, use that Skirmish on the Ancient Bear to finish off Dr. Escatera, followed up by a Reap on Niffle, yep. putting him in check. The Assault 2 means he doesn't even take any damage from yeah. the attack, which is great. W one of the few times I've actually... I've found uh, Ancient Bear to be actually an overrated card in most cases. Unless you have the Bear Flute, I mean, it's not that yeah. great. Here's Creeping Oblivion by Kirk. Uh, generally not a very, so, like, overtly useful hey, card. Taking, taking Witch of the Eye out of circulation. Yeah. It's pretty good. Lost in the Woods is another useful card that's taken out. 
Gonna fogify, preventing any attack. On oh, is that a Maverick fogify? Well, he has a Maverick and a non-Maverick. Wow. He's got one of each. So he's got one in Decent, Crazy. he's got a regular one in Logos. Library of the Damned, one of my favorite artifacts. He's gonna follow up with Fear, returning uh, Ancient Bear back into play. Not that big of a deal with a speed sigil in uh, in the deck. Fortunately, no Deese creatures on uh, Kirk's side of the board yet. Hasn't really been able to take advantage of that speed sigil, but Kyle's going to take this opportunity, forge his first key of the game, putting him up 1 0. A lot of Sanctum cards hiding in Kyle's hand there. I think Sanctum is probably the best house for him to pick at this point. There's a doorstep to heaven. We saw that used to amazing effect in the previous round by Anish. Instead, decides just uh, to go with a single reap. He, with, doesn't uh, have a, he doesn't have a doorstep. Sorry, it wasn't a doorstep to heaven. It's, uh, must have been a similar. Uh, I, I gotta admit, the, all the sanctum cards look the same. It's, it makes it really hard to identify them. <laughs> but he just he just uses uh, his nephilim to reap one. He must be holding on to a lot of. Sanctum control elements that he doesn't wish to use until uh, Kirk plays out some stuff onto the board. Kirk forging his first key of the game as well. So unlike round one, where we saw a lot of back and forth before the first key was forged, this looks like almost like a straight up race. Uh, but I know Kirk's deck doesn't really have a way to deal with Amber particularly well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that Kyle's does either. Uh, yeah. No. Not. Not really. Snudge was the play by Kirk. Uh, so when you reap, you get to fight or reap, you get to return a flank or artifact to owner's hand. Uh, that's really, that's really good with a speed sigil. In I'll, play. I'll be, I'll be honest. It might be a good thing to hold until your opponent has creatures. Like with the snudge. Well, yeah. One of the nice things with snudge is you can control the opponent's board. And he has a hard time getting a creature that stays, that can deal with it. But he but, did have. He could return the nifflape. Yeah, but the nifflape. Who cares? So here's uh, Sanctum. Raiding Knight was the first play, followed by a Take Hostages. Take Hostages, I think, uh, is it Capture Amber or something for every creature he has in play? Speed Sigil, he uses it to uh, fight with the Raiding Knight. Now he's playing two Inspirations to reap twice. Straight up race here. Only two Inspirations, Travis. <laughs> I only played two? Yeah. So very quickly after forging his first key, Kyle sitting on four amber, threatening a second uh, second key forge in a in a turn or two here. Kirk might be looking to call Deese. Does have a lot of Bromner cards. I think both Kyle's and Kirk's hand were kind of clunky in the previous turn because a, a lot of Bromner cards in Kirk's hand seem to be controlling. Here's a Valder, which is going to straight up trade with the Raiding Knights. Uh, Staunch Knight. I'm not sure why they... Staunch Knight. Staunch, Staunch, Staunch Knight. Staunch Knight. Sorry. The one that has the extra power. Right, right. Not a rating Knight. Staunch Knight. That's why they trade. And then follows up with the... I forget the name of the guy, but he's the gain one when he fights. Uh, Dude. No, sorry. But yeah, you were saying that you talked to Kirk and he said it. he didn't have a lot of amber control in his deck. So well, that was his concern. And also looking at it, he doesn't have a lot. Yeah, it's in his best interest to straight up... Uh, Straight up race, Kyle. But I mean, Kirk, Kirk does have a couple gateways, so he does have some board like, clear. That that's sp the speed sigil, though, right? It's not gonna. It's gonna make the gateway to Deese a lot less effective. I see a hand of Deese. I see a. I think it's a terror, maybe, or the one that steals if you have five or more, four or more, rather. We'll call Deese again. Archives another card. Looks like Brobnar was the card that he archived. Follows it up with an Ember Imp. Probably not long for this world. No. Hand of Deese is the discard. Obviously not doing a lot of work either right now or perhaps in the near future. That's hand one of, of the, Deese is only going to get rid of non-flank creatures, so... Yeah, well, and that's one of the good tensions about this game, right? How long do you hold out to something like that? 
Because yeah. right, it's going to be cluttering up your hand every single turn that it's in there. Well, that's one of the things where it's like, is that the card that you archive? Because it might be a useful bullet to have in your gun later, but you may also just want to be building a particular house to have one explosive turn. Right. Kirk forgot, you, forgot he actually had a ready creature he could uh, use that turn with the speed suit. So he's just going back and doing the reap on the Emerim? Mm -hmm. Kyle's hand, very shadows heavy, it looks like. Relentless Whispers, going to start off dealing two damage, stealing one as a result. A very annoying card. Another Speed Sigil, why not? Oh, here no. comes... Uh, the other Speed Sigil doesn't do anything, but it's an Amber. It does give him Amber, yeah. But if you don't know what you're, what's in your opponent's deck, you also want to not get too greedy with the Amber generation. Because you never know what they might have, right? So there's that second speed si speed sigil. Looks like uh, Logos was the house called. He did return all the archive cards to his hand. Starts with the Effervescent Principle. Speaking of being greedy, that's one of the punish cards there. That's going to be a huge play for Kirk. Uh, denying Kyle the the key forge there and only having to spend uh, only having to suffer one chain as a result. That's going to put him slightly back in the game, but he's going to need to follow it up with uh, with a Logos creature that he can use this turn. He has several, so he's. I think he's just deciding which one he wants to enter play yeah, ready I... by playing first. I think I saw a Doc Bookton in his hand. Uh, there's a Quixo the Adventurer and a uh, Titan Archaeologist, or Titan Mechanic, I think is the, the name of the guy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's Kixo. Kixo. Well, Quixo or Bookton? No, Quixo. Quixo has skirmish, right? You get rid of, you get rid of the ape, Giffle you trade the ape nice. And you draw a card off it, too. So. Oh, but he's going to use it to kill the, the whatever that guy's name, the steal one fight dude. He does a mechanic, follows it up with Bookton, and uh, the adventure. Yeah. M Mechanic's always a risky play. Or Brad play. Andres. I mean, yeah, Brad Andres, yeah. So far, him and his wife have been featured on cards that he's designed. Well, no references to his. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a deep, uh, deep cut for all the people that played Conquest in the past. Subject Omega. <laughs> so Kyle's debating what to do here. Coming in with a Dew Fairy. He's going to use it right away. Man, I thought I thought playing the Speed Sigil would be risky, but it looks like Kyle's been really uh, reaping the benefits, so to speak. Oh, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> Dew Fairy and, uh, was it Dust Pixie? Is that the one? Dust Pixie That's and Pixie. Dew Fairy? Yeah. Two of, two of the best untamed cards, in my opinion. Titan Mechanic. Uh... So, so Kyle there tried to use Key Charge, thinking he'd be able to combo with Titan Mechanic, but Titan Mechanic only works while it's on a flank. And Kirk was just pointing that out to him. Oh, interesting. Instead, he just... He knew, uh, he knew that he was giving uh, Kyle a bigger advantage, so didn't want to yeah. keep him on the flank. I had, had the option of like leaving him there if he wanted to, but... Well, Kyle just ended up reaping with the Niffleape and then using Key Charge instead. Just to force that key straight up. Back to Kirk here. Looks like a Cower's End is a start. Gaining three chains, but it's going to put him... Uh, oh, no. I think he's going to loot the bodies first. Yes. So that's going to grant him... What is it? Two Ember, I think. It only counts uh, opponent's creatures that get killed. Yes. Titan Mechanic back on the flank now. Which means that both keys are going to cost, uh, both players' keys are going to only going to cost five. He's going to follow that out with a fire spitter, just going to use it to, uh, yeah, he's just going to use it to reap. My producer's getting a little overexcited with the, the card display. Well, I mean, I thought that was the one he played, he had it in his hand. Now he plays the war drummer just to replay the dude. Doesn't really do much, but gets two more Broadmoor creatures out in play. Now he's back on four Amber. Now, 
Having that Titan mechanic on the flank, potentially dangerous. Uh, well, knowing that he's behind, he wants to try to get yeah. the savings before. Right, but Kyle only has one key left to, to win, right? Odds aren't high that there's multiple key charges in the deck or any explosive ways to gain Amber, but you never can be too careful, right? <laughs> Yeah, Kyle has two witches. Another staunch knight as Kyle chooses Sanctum. Here's a potion of invulnerability. One of uh, Sanctum's hallmark artifacts which uh, make it very annoying for your opponent to deal with in combat. Radiant Truth was the play by Kyle. Gaining an Amber and, uh, I think, stunning. Stunning yeah. non-flank creatures. Not on a flank. Decides to trade for the Titan mechanic. Yeah, it's smart. I mean, all Kyle needs to do is gain four more Ambers, so... Now, he thought he traded with... Uh, the Titan mechanic, but that Sanch Knight does have two armor. Right, yeah. That Well, no, it's not that. It's the extra power. So, well, it's remembering that it's two armor, right? not just how hard it hits, it's also its health. Well, the Titan mechanic is six power, but it was the armor plus the... Uh, right. The but, uh, yeah, I yeah, think it was know. the plus power that they missed right there. It's true. You're the one with the headphones. Oh, I, I can hear the chatter from the next game. The... These guys are quiet. The game beside them is loud. Both players are seasoned card players, so generally when you have two, uh, yeah. two experienced card players... They're just card talking players, about whether, whether the about. fight ability will trigger. It won't because it'll die from the six power. So instead, she's just to reap. Yeah, it makes sense. Just reap, get some uh, amber. Then he plays out... Uh, I don't Smash. Know what that card was. Smash. Smash. Okay, stun a creature. That's pretty good. Another fire spitter. Wow. Looks like he drew all the Brobnar creatures this turn. Now, if his opponent doesn't have another sweeper, he just calls Brobnar next turn, controls the board a bit more, and just starts reaping with four or five creatures every turn. So while technically Kyle is up on on key key count. Kirk does have the board advantage here. Right. Looks like aside from the speed sigils, Kyle's uh, shadows cards haven't really been uh, been coming into play all that much. There is an asp. Which, in, in most circumstances, is very good, especially with the speed sigil. Yes. But uh, with, the, with the width of uh, Kirk's board, I don't know if it's going to do enough. Vault Keeper, interesting. Locks down, prevents, uh, prevents any steals. Yep. Combines uh, it with a Protect the Weak. Two armor and taunt. Protects, uh, at least for a little while, that staunch knight from attacks. So Kirk's going to be able to forge here, but I wonder if he has any Brobnar cards in his hand. He can well, almost what do you think about just calling Brobnar gaining five Amber this turn? I would probably only do that if I had a control card in my hand to per possibly prevent Kyle from getting check next turn. Well, so like with the um, Headhunter, he'll be able to hit... The gatekeeper, right? Or the vault keeper. So he can't kill, but he can uh, gain another armor. So he get a, he can't get up to five amber here. He can get up to five amber, right? So he reaps with... Oh, no, he can't. He can only get to five. Sorry. Yeah. I was thinking six. I see a burn the stockpile in uh, Kirk's hand. So it's possible that... Kyle might overstep here. Yeah. Gain uh, seven amber, and then uh, Kirk can use that 
So if he if he if he reaps five amber here, uh, passes the turn, hopes Kyle gains three amber on his turn. He could use burn the stockpile and then reap. Do so you have two headhunters or just one headhunter at the moment? Uh, it looks like yeah. one head headhunter. I think. Yeah. Looks like just one. Two fire spitters, one headhunter, one smash, one uh, war drummer. So this looks like a, a reap to no a fight. fight. Because you'll gain one anyways, right? You might it's like equivalent to fight, so except you'll deal the three damage. Keeper, right? Yeah, there's no choice. It's time. So. Yep. Now you can fight with a fire spitter, and the fire spitter won't take any damage. That is that because it deals the damage for the deals fight? the damage before the fight. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because because of the bore, before fight text, the fight doesn't actually happen. Kills. Vault Keeper dies. It's unfortunate with the taunt because it would have been good to yeah. get the kill, to kill both of them with that. But so the staunch knight is down one armor. This is this is a safe play too. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't have traded the fire spitter. I would have just traded the uh, war drummer. You're right. Because he only needed to do two more damage. All right, not a bad turn. This is a safer play because. Um, the other line was to hope that Kyle got to seven amber, because then burn the stockpile will be useful. But here, um, now it's the now it's on Kyle to uh, not only put himself in check, but to also stop Kirk from gaining four amber next turn. Uh, He's gonna start with the ass. Just because it's a free kill. What do you kill here? Smash? No, you kill uh, a fire spitter. But yeah, I, I, you definitely would have killed fire spitter here. This looks like a relentless whisper. No, no, that's uh, this is lights out. I think that's in uh, Kyle's hand. That's the one that returns creatures to their hand. Yeah, right. That's pretty good, actually. It's only okay. Gains one amber. Returns the war drummer. I guess that's why he killed Smash. Actually, yeah. Because then uh, he knew he was going to play this. Now he's going to play Pawn Sacrifice. And well, other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Played lights out first, then played pawn sacrifice. Now he's at six amber. Well, no, he did. He, he, he did pawn sacrifice first. Okay. Then lights out because fewer fewer things in his hand. They're just conceding. Kirk knows he doesn't have any way to steal the amber that Kyle's generated. So Kyle's going to be able to forge the key in his next hand. That was, a, in the round. That was a true race there. I mean, yeah. there were, there was a couple of lines like Kyle. If he if he got too greedy, like if he was maybe fearing a steal one amber kind of play. He could have got blown out by Burn the Stockpile, but as it was, he got himself exactly to six amber. Ended up winning the game there. Kirk, despite not having as much amber control as he uh, would have liked, uh, still made that a close game. 